by the mind of man. Dawn remembers again the magic circle, Stonehenge. Magic circle, observatory, temple aligned with the rising of the sun and the turning of the heavens. Stones from afar brought by man to this place where no stones were before, more than 3,000 years ago. Apollo 11, 15 July, 1969, Cape Kennedy, Florida, the night before the great day. Six million pounds of machine, 36 stories tall. Nearly 10 years work of half a million people. Through the night, it was checklisted, double checked, electronically monitored, computerized, televised, dehumanized of human error. The day began for the astronauts. Breakfast, medical examination, suiting up. Neil Armstrong, Commander Apollo 11. Edwin Buzz Aldrin, Lunar Module Pilot. Michael Collins, command module pilot. Far across the Indian River, 12 miles away, the rocket. At 6.32 a.m., three hours before launch, on pad 39A, Armstrong and Aldrin walked on the surface of the Earth. Their next steps would be on the moon. Spectators rolled in by the thousands. Campers, trailers, cars, and pickups filled the campsites and the beaches, lined the highways, lined the parkways, nose to tailgate. Propellant load pressure and temperature. 
digital transmission worldwide tracking, stabilization and guidance, radio frequency telemetry and voice communications, signal conditioner integration, spacecraft electrical power, flight control, S4B propulsion stage monitoring, S1C, S2 propulsion stage. Every important valve, gauge, and circuit was continually monitored at Launch Control Center throughout the 28-hour countdown. Around the world, another morning. Not so very different from the morning before or tomorrow morning. This day on which man will leave Earth to walk on the moon Three billion people went about their daily lives. Some in the way their ancestors did centuries before. Others in a world shaped by modern technology. It seemed that most people were unaware that this event might change the history of the human race. That this morning would be marked in history books and learned by their children's children. In what age of man will the meaning of this morning be understood? This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We passed the six minute mark in our countdown for Apollo 11, the flight to land of the first men on the moon. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. 35 seconds and counting. We are still go with Apollo 11. 30 seconds and counting. Astronauts report it feels good. T-minus 25 seconds. 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. for mode one, Charlie. Mark, mode one, Charlie. One, Charlie. This is Houston, you are go for staging. Board cut off. Come in, board cut off.
It could honestly be said that this was the culmination of the dreams and fantasies of men and women over 25 centuries of recorded time. We got skirt step. Roger, we confirm skirt step. Tower's gone. Roger, tower. What science fiction in the childhood of the space age could have guessed the shape of reality? The Saturn V rocket. Three stages, 28 stories tall, with 11 engines as powerful as all the waterfalls in North America combined. Years in the planning, months in the building and testing, the Saturn first stage lived but two minutes, 41 seconds. Houston, thrust is go. All engines, you're looking good. All right, Roger, you're loud and clear. You... Two minutes, 41 seconds. Time to throw Apollo 40 miles up into the sky, and then an empty shell to fall back into the sea. Mission control in Houston, Texas had taken over from launch control at Cape Kennedy for the duration of the eight-day mission. The complicated technology of Apollo Saturn evolved from an ingeniously simple concept, lunar orbit rendezvous. This requires a rocket made in many pieces that discards the useless weight of each piece when its function is completed. The flight began with a vertical lift through the heavy lower atmosphere and a tilt to the east. At 6,000 miles per hour, the empty first stage is discarded to save weight. So is an adapter ring and the unused escape tower. With the second stage firing, it reaches 15,000 miles per hour when it too is jettisoned. The third stage places Apollo in Earth orbit at 17,400 miles per hour. When the spacecraft has been thoroughly checked out by the crew, the third stage fires again, its speed now tearing it free from the grip of Earth's gravity. While coasting outward, the command service module separates and docks for access to the lunar module, and the empty third stage is left behind. Apollo loses speed throughout nine-tenths of its journey until the moon's gravity overcomes the pull of Earth. Apollo fires in reverse direction, slowing down enough to be captured in orbit about the moon. Armstrong and Aldrin enter the lunar module Eagle, which separates, leaving Collins and the command service module in lunar orbit. Eagle slows still more and breaks to a touchdown on the lunar surface. After the moonwalk, the upper stage of the Eagle lifts off, leaving behind the now useless landing stage, and swings into orbit to dock with Columbia once again. When the crew and moon samples are transferred to the command service module, the lunar module is discarded. The command service module fires itself out of lunar orbit and falls back to Earth. As it approaches the re-entry speed of nearly 25,000 miles per hour, the service module drops away. The command module plunges into the atmosphere, protected by its heat shield. Slowed still more by the heavy lower atmosphere, it parachutes into the sea. The command module, Columbia, is all that remains of the original 3,000 tons of rocket, fuel, and cargo. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. While in Earth orbit, the Apollo crew had less than two hours to check out all their spacecraft systems, the last chance to discover and correct any malfunction before the third stage engine is restarted to break them free of Earth, the translunar injection. We're 10 minutes away from ignition on translunar injection. Ignition. We confirm ignition and the thrust is go. 
about low level, Roger. Guidance looking good. Velocity 26,000 feet per second. Telemetry Through the window of the command module, the Earth gently slipped away. Feet per second. All 11, this is Houston. Thrust is good. Everything's still looking good. Deep space tracking antennas, a third of a world apart, listened to Apollo and spoke to Apollo. As the Earth turned, at least one of them would have contact with Apollo at all times, except when it passed behind the moon. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston, we recommend you accept the 949, continue through your sequence of sightings, and then we'll analyze the data afterwards, over. Okay. On board was a fourth brain, a small computer called Disky, which solved problems and helped with a long sequence of systems checks and data exchange with Earth. Houston, Apollo 11. They found their way across the sea of space, navigating by the same stars that guided Columbus to shores unknown. Three days falling to the moon, free of the gravity of Earth. No up or down, no day or night. Within this tiny spacecraft, a temporary Earth environment, warmth, air, food, water, everything necessary to sustain life. Columbia, the command module, was a supreme achievement of the technology of its age. It was a mini planet, complete with its own environmental control system, telecommunications, electrical power, guidance, navigation, stabilization, propulsion, reaction control. It provided hot and cold water, and removed carbon dioxide from the air. Three men could live here for more than a week, eat, work, sleep, shave, exercise, and listen to music. It was micrometeor proof, burn proof, and seaworthy, and it could tilt itself in any direction. In short, it was the most intricate and sophisticated machine ever made by man. Beyond these fragile walls, nothingness, absolute cold, an end to life. Only the slow creeping of the harsh sunlight through the windows as the spacecraft rotates to keep from getting too hot on one side, too cold on the other. Three days falling upward to the moon. Apollo went into orbit around the moon. The journey that had taken the lifetime of mankind was nearing its crucial moment. Apollo 11, Houston, we're wondering if uh, you started into that limb yet, over. The lunar module Eagle was again given a thorough checkout to ensure the functioning of all systems as Armstrong and Aldrin prepared to seal themselves off from Collins in the command module and for the two craft to pull apart. Okay, it's go there, Capcom on the hot fire. Okay, all flight controllers going around the horn, gonna go for undocking. Okay, retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guide. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. Gincy. Go. Ecom. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for undocking. Hello, Eagle Houston, we're standing by, over.
Eagle, Houston, we, Houston, we see you on the stairwell, over. Roger, Eagle, turn back. Roger, how does it look? The Eagle has wings. Roger. The Eagle has wings. On its own now, but with Columbia near at hand, it coasted around to the backside of the moon, and there, while out of direct communication with the Earth, it fired its engine to slow its descent to a touchdown on the near side of the moon. Collins in Columbia continued in orbit, awaiting their return. Flight controllers, gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Rhino. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. You're looking great. How you doing, Control? We look good here. Fine. Roger, how about you, Telcom? Go. Guidance, you happy? Go. Rhino. Go. 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet. Into the ag. 47 degrees. Roger. 37 degrees. Still looking very good. Here go. Top alarm. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. 1201 alarm. Same type, we're go, flight. Okay, we're go. We're go, same type, we're go. Altitude 1600. Eagle looking great. Roger, 1202. Through the window of the Eagle, the moon approached. 750, coming down to 23. 540 feet and a 15. 1050 feet down at 4. Altitude velocity light. Three and a half down. 220 feet. Five and forward coming down nicely. 200 feet. Four and a half down. Five and a half down. 100 feet. Three and a half down. Nine forward. 375 feet. That's looking good. Down a half. Six forward. 60 seconds. Lights on, forward, forward, 40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust, straight shadow, four forward, drift into the right a little, 30 seconds, forward, just, contact left, okay, engine stop, we copy it down, Eagle, Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed, This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 105 hours. Uh, now into the flight to Apollo 11. Yeah, our current plan is to. And the world uh, waited. Crew members aboard the Eagle to eat. July 20th, for a while 1969. To EVA prep, so we won't know with certainty. It is said that 500 million people gathered at TV sets around the world to wait for the first Earthling to set foot on the moon. Countless millions more listened on the radio to the voices from the moon. Never before had so many people been attuned to one event at one time. The world waited, curious, wondering, aware. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming. Okay, I just checked, uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's, uh, that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy That's you. That's a pretty good little jump. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only, uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, now, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the limb. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. That's 
One small step for man. Un pequeño paso para el hombre. Un gran salto para el hombre. Para la humanidad. All right, let's get over the radio. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like m much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field of view now. That's the first picture in the panorama. Okay, I'm going to move it. Tell me if you got a picture, Houston. Well, we've got a beautiful picture, Neil. Okay, we got that one. Okay, there's another good one. Uh, for a final orientation, we'd like it to come left about uh, five degrees over. Okay. Okay, that looks good there, Neil. Buzz is erecting the solar wind experiment now. Every precious minute of their two and a half hours on the surface was programmed. Rock and soil samples were to be collected, photographs taken, experiments set up to catch unfiltered particles from the sun, to record moon quakes, to measure precisely by laser beam reflection the exact distance between moon and earth. Columbia, Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. I'd like to evaluate the uh, various paces that a person can traveling on the surface. You do have to be. All right, you do have to be uh, rather careful uh, to keep track of where your center of mass is. Sometimes it takes about two or three paces to uh, make sure that uh, you've got your feet underneath you. Maybe four easy paces can bring you to a fairly smooth uh, stop. Like a football player, you just have to put out to the side and cut a little bit. So-called kangaroo hop does work, but it seems you know, your forward stability is not quite as good. But would uh, get rather tiring after several hundred feet. But this may be a function of a suit as well as a uh, lack of gravity force here. Alone, 45 miles above the moon's surface, Michael Collins completed an orbit every two hours. He listened to the progress of the moonwalk and awaited the moment when his companions on the surface would lift off to rendezvous with him. The eagle had left the moon and returned to Colombia. It's marvelous. Absolutely fantastic. The first person on the moon. No, it's just too much. I, I can't get over it. I don't know how to put it, you know, but uh, it's the uh, most marvelous thing. It's a miracle. This is formidable. I don't know it. But we are really thrilled. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world. It's great, really great for the whole world. This this means a lot to all the countries, not just for America. And being out of it and being close to the moon makes us realize that we're all human beings together. I hope this brings unity amongst all countries. And I just hope it won't help you from solving all internal problems you may have. Well, I think it's a waste of a lot of money that could be used for something else. They holler about people are being on starvation. This huge amount of money Americans spend to see what the moon is like. What's for? It's disgusting. It's a pity they haven't got something else to do. Be, be better if they'd done something for the oldens. What if Columbus had decided he just couldn't get the money from Isabella? Where would That's one be? of God's celestial planets. Within this strange ship, two astronauts and a treasure. 
triple sealed vacuum boxes of rocks and soil from the surface of the moon. Locked within these rocks were secrets of the ages to be studied and deciphered by the scientists of Earth. The age of the moon, the age of the sun, how the moon was formed. How life began. Was there ever life on the moon? Was the moon once molten and volcanic or has it always been cold and dead? Was it once part of the earth? Or was it a wandering planet captured by the Earth eons ago? How hot was the sun three billion years ago? Columbia fired out of lunar orbit to begin its three-day fall back to Earth, where the recovery fleet was waiting for its splashdown in the Pacific. 35,000 feet per second now. 36,000 feet per second. Re-entry into the Earth's invisible atmosphere carries with it one of the most critical moments. There's blackout. Traveling nearly 25,000 miles per hour, the command module can miss the angle of re-entry by only several degrees and disintegrate into flames or bounce off into space, never to return. Sonic boom a short time ago. Apollo 11 Houston and the blind uh, air boss has a visual contact. Apollo 11 Houston through Araya standing by. Over. Strokes. treasure of the ages. Stones from across the night. Unrubbed by wind. Unwashed by rain. Scattered on tranquility. Bombarded by solar particles for billions of years, but unchanged in any other way, a moon rock is like a diary of the sun, 
an eye unblinking since time began. Remembered in these rocks are ancient sunspots, solar flares, solar storms whose fiery arms reached out a million miles. By making ourselves very small, like Alice, perhaps we will see what these rocks have seen and remember back those billions of years to decipher the life of the sun. to mysteries that have confounded man since time began. We have reached out with our telescopes. We have reached in with our microscopes. Seeking. What is the source of life? What combination of energies and elements brought it into existence? What is the relationship between the non-living and living things? How delicate is the balance? Man slowly begins to realize how fragile is his bubble of life. Open our minds to the universe. 